Today's episode is brought to you by Magic Spoon. The vast expanses of space stretch far beyond what our brains can even comprehend. And so, the fascination with the idea of intelligent life being out there is understandable. Do aliens exist? Can they reach our planet? And more importantly, have they already? Today we dig into some interesting stories of people who not only have seen extraterrestrials, but they hung out with them. Here are five shocking extraterrestrial encounter stories. Number five, Pierre Zanfretta. For alien enthusiasts, the Zanfretta UFO incident is considered one of the most peculiar and intriguing alien encounter stories ever. It centers around a man named Pierre Zanfretta, an Italian night watchman who claimed to have been abducted by unknown beings. And it didn't happen just once, but a staggering 11 times between the years 1978 and 1981. It all started on a chilly December night back in 78. 26-year-old Zanfretta was on his nightly duties in a villa named Casa Nostra, in Marzano di Terraglia in Genoa. It was just around midnight when his normal routine inspection then suddenly took a creepy turn. As he was driving around amid the darkness, he saw a bright red oval-shaped object that, according to him, measured over 35 feet in diameter. The whole thing dominated the entirety of the villa's backyard. Confused and scared, he immediately called his supervisor, who couldn't really comprehend what was being said as the man was shouting and screaming. Obviously, he was in an extreme panic state. Before his boss could fully understand the situation, then Freda's voice abruptly vanished from the line. An eventual inquiry revealed that the watchman had supposedly come face to face with beings that were not of our kind. According to his statement, these entities stood almost nine feet tall, with mottled skin as though they were wearing a rumpled suit. Adding to their strange features were their large, yellow, triangular-shaped eyes and clawed feet. Around an hour after the call, Zanfretta would go on to be found at his post, unconscious by his co-workers, where he told them the spotty details as he couldn't fully remember everything that had happened. He went on to undergo hypnosis to try to see what else was there, which then unveiled further details of his harrowing ordeal in Casa Nostra. While under the trance, the watchman revealed that the beings he saw had taken him captive, transported him to a brightly lit chamber within their spacecraft. Expanding upon his initial accounts, Amfreda further described the entities as greenish in color, possessing large triangular yellow eyes accentuated with thorns and wrinkles. But the picture gets even weirder than that. Their mouths look like they were made of iron. Coursing across their heads were crimson veins, their ears pointy like that of elves, and their arms embellished with strange rounded appendages. When asked, Zanfreda revealed that these creatures told him that they came from the third galaxy. Now the third galaxy from Earth is called the Triangulum Galaxy and is 2.73 million light years away. So if this is in fact where they came from, then they would most certainly need to be able to travel in a way that bends space and time. After that hypnosis session, three days later he claimed to have been abducted again while out on patrol. This time while driving his car, he said he had lost control where the brakes were not working and after that, a bright light from above enveloped the entire vehicle. You may think he was making up stories for attention and clout, but that's not necessarily the case. And why this interaction is so popular? An investigation by authorities revealed a host of witnesses who claimed that on the same night Zanfretta encountered the other kind the first time, they spotted an unidentified flying object landing on the aforementioned location. On that site, investigators found a horseshoe-shaped impression of an aircraft that measured approximately the same size as what he told them earlier on. At the second site, 
huge boot prints all around the man's car, measured 20 inches long and were 8 inches wide. They would go on to have nine more abductions, all with their own interesting details. I may have to cover this whole story on an episode of Every Town to get it all in. Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts of the day, but as I got older, I realized it no longer fit my lifestyle. But with Magic Spoon, I'm able to enjoy one of my childhood favorites again and even play some games like I used to. Magic Spoon is a simple, high-quality cereal that has all the same great taste you remember, only upgraded with grown-up ingredients. Their variety pack comes in four delicious flavors, frosted, cocoa, peanut butter, and my favorite, fruity. It's crazy how good it tastes. You won't believe there's zero grams of sugar. You're going to love all four flavors, so go ahead and happily order some. Click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code SCARYMIST at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com slash scarymist. The Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any single reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below or scan the QR code on the screen. And use the code scary mist for five dollars off or go to magicspoon.com slash scary mist to save five dollars today number four the journey to planet serpo no story about ufo and alien encounters has gathered as much controversy and infamy as the book by len caston secret journey to planet serpo Len is a UFO researcher and former member of the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena and the Mutual UFO Network. And through his research, he has spoken with top officials from the government, and one of them told him about a very classified mission that allegedly occurred in the 1960s. Back then, a handful of American astronauts were selected for a top-secret mission. Those chosen would be gone for several years, and so... They were hand-selected, men who didn't have much family and would be willing to take the risk. It was to be an expedition beyond our world, to the distant planet called Serpo, which is situated within the Zeta Reticular star system some 39 light years away. In 1965, 12 selected astronauts embarked on the interstellar odyssey aboard an advanced spacecraft made by an extraterrestrial species known as the Ebent, who first came to our planet and landed in Nevada, north of Las Vegas in 1962. The massive vessel possessed advanced propulsion technology that helped the cosmic voyagers in their journey. Despite the insane speed of this vehicle, it still took them quite a while to arrive at their destination due to the vast distance between our planet and Serpo. Upon arriving, the Earthlings encountered the rest of the Ebens, who inhabited the planet. Once there, the astronauts immersed themselves in the culture and society of the Ebens. These creatures were vegans and their society set up in a way that didn't pay money. But everyone instead understood that they had an important role to play in order to keep things functioning. Over the course of their stay, the Americans were able to learn not only about their host's history, and societal structure, but also about their scientific advancements. In turn, our representatives shared to the Ebens planet Earth's culture and technology. Serpo itself is a planet with two suns and a diverse landscape. The Ebens actually lived in modest accommodations out in what would be more like the deserts of Earth, but there were forests and greener areas. During their stay, they explored its terrain, experienced its climate, and gained a profound understanding of its natural beauty. 1978, 13 years after they set foot in this strange place, the Earthlings finally made a decision to go back home. Upon their return, these 12 unnamed members of the interstellar voyage were debriefed and made to document their experiences one of the greatest takeaways they had during the expedition was the knowledge and the technology which could help solve our planet's energy problems. This information, of course, is still classified, however. 
Kasten went on to reveal that our interaction with the Ebbins didn't end with our astronauts returning to Earth. He claimed that our relationship with them is still ongoing to this day. They had already been coming on and off our planet at least eight times. Obviously, all the details remain yet to be verified and corroborated. Nonetheless, the controversy these accounts have spurred helped perpetrate the belief that we might actually be in close contact with the other kind. Number 3. Betty and Driesen Betty and Driesen's extraordinary encounter with UFOs and aliens in 1967 ignited a controversy. It all began on the evening of January 25th, 1967 in South Ashburnham, Massachusetts, in the western part of the state. There was a power outage in Betty's home that night, which prompted everyone in her family to gather in the kitchen. As it was dark inside the house, a little pink light seemed to grab everyone's attention outside. Her dad went out there to check it out, and there he saw several little creatures around three feet tall, which to him, for some strange reason, didn't spark fear, but instead he thought of them as just harmless Halloween-like costumes, even though he instinctively knew they were not human. Back inside, he didn't make a big deal about it. The family didn't question anything. So it was odd behavior, considering that even if it were a bunch of kids on your property, that would certainly raise a few red flags. The next morning, though, everything seemed normal. The beings were gone, but there was an unspoken, lingering feeling that something unusual had occurred. Rather than a fading memory in the following weeks, flashbacks of humanoid creatures and a vision of an otherworldly place plagued Betty's mind. He wasn't sure what to make of it, and so, for the most part, ignored the intrusive thoughts until finally, a decade later, she decided to dig down deeper. It was 1977 then, and during a hypnosis session, the whole story of what happened that evening finally bubbled up to the surface. Apparently, after her father caught sight of the miniature beings, everyone in her family then became paralyzed. The small gray entities then entered the home where they picked up Betty and brought her out to their disc-shaped spaceship to load her on board. She was subjected to a series of experiments, all the while being in some sort of mind-controlled trance. While on the vessel, Betty recalled having an experience of meeting a divine entity, which she, as she perceived it, could be God. This divinity, whom she later identified as Quasga, talked to her and told her that she was chosen for her task. Her mission was to teach humanity to overcome their self-destructive tendencies. After that, the creature implanted a mysterious object up in her nose. Her time aboard the ship culminated with a final lecture, wherein Quasga revealed that he and his companions loved humanity and that they had come to help. She was then told that she would forget what had occurred, at least for a while. Consequently, Andreessen made herself available for interviews with UFO researchers, psychologists, and even theologians. These experts have varied reactions. Some offered psychological explanations, while others outrightly believed in the possibility that what she met could actually be extraterrestrial entities. Amidst the ongoing debate, Betty stood firmly in her belief that what she had gone through was real. In fact, her otherworldly encounter further cemented her Christian faith, believing that what she encountered could be none other than heavenly beings. Her implant, however, has never been recovered. Number 2. Whitley Stryber Willie Stryber is an author born in San Antonio, Texas back in 1945. He grew up to become a successful author, writing popular horror novels, The Wolfen and The Hunger in the 1970s, which both went on to become successful feature films. But something happened to him in his home that changed his life forever when he was 40 years old. He claims to have been abducted by aliens, and whether or not you believe his story, the book that came from it, Communion 
went on to become a bestseller as well. On the night of December 26, 1985, the writer claims that he was at his remote cabin in upstate New York taking a rest after a full day of writing. In the dead of night, he groggily woke up that something was off. When he turned over, standing at the foot of his bed were several small creatures. They were in the shadows, but he could see their large, dark eyes, elongated heads, and slender frames which seemed to defy conventional human physiology. Realizing what he was looking at, he froze out of fear, or maybe it was them controlling him. He couldn't move, and he couldn't even let out a cry for help. These strange beings, whom he would later refer to in his book as the Visitors, then took him against his will outside where they brought him to a giant spacecraft where they performed what he said were some type of medical procedures. For example, the beings had a thin gray and scaly object measuring about a foot long which they inserted into his rectum. At first he thought they were taking samples of his insides, but the impression he had was also one of simply being violated, which left him both physically and emotionally shaken. All throughout that time, Stryber could do nothing. Still frozen, so to speak, he had to endure the entire otherworldly ordeal. After what seemed like an eternity, the torment finally ended, and the man then found himself abandoned in his own cabin. Amidst the bewilderment, the author tried hard to jot down the events that transpired, but the memory of everything was patchy. The world, though, would later come to know of his harrowing story in Communion, which he published in 1987 with a subtitle that says, A True Story. He would go on to claim that there were several other instances where the visitors came back to see him, and each time was terrifying. He says he was beaten by them and prodded while several of the creatures just stood by watching. One event, something was implanted into his ear. Over time, he then began to recall events like this that had happened to him much earlier in his life. He realized he had been abducted since he was a kid. Perhaps these traumatizing events are what made him become a horror writer in the first place. Or maybe because he was such a good writer, he was able to make people believe that all these incidents with the visitors actually happened. Number 1. Herbert Schimmer Trained to be objective in their judgment, law enforcers are probably the last kind of people whom you can mess with when it comes to the extraordinary. Yet despite his skepticism, one officer was confronted by a dilemma that would shatter his beliefs, forever altering his views on the possibility of the existence of extraterrestrial beings. Herbert Shermer was a patrolman for the Nebraska State Police Department he was already in his seventh month of his service when he came across something he couldn't comprehend. It was the night of December 3rd, 1967. The 22-year-old was patrolling near Ashland when he saw what he initially thought was a tractor trailer parked at the junction of Highway 6 and 63, now famously known as Route 66. He approached the vehicle, but as he got closer, he realized it was no truck. In fact, it wasn't even touching the ground. In front of him was a craft of some sort. It was shining a bright red light and hovering above the asphalt. As he was taking it in, his mind started to go crazy, but it wasn't just racing thoughts. Something was actually taking control and bringing him into an altered state of consciousness. Looking up at the craft, he could see windows running along it and inside humanoid-looking beings. They had large eyes, long hair, and small, slit-like mouths. The entities then communicated with him telepathically, telling him that they were from a distant star. Shermer even claimed that they showed him images of their home planet. They then explained that they were on Earth to harvest electrical energy. The craft then disappeared. Shermer's mind went back to normal, and there he sat in his car. After a moment, he quickly made his way back to the barracks, but since he was the only one on patrol, no one was around to go investigate, so 
Instead, he carefully wrote down in his logbook what he experienced. The next morning, with word getting around, his supervisor checked the log, and his first thought was that he was worried about his officer's mental health. He spoke with Shermer, who told him everything, and the chief then ordered the patrolman to submit himself to an investigation conducted by a government-sanctioned Air Force committee. What they ended up doing was putting the patrolman under hypnosis several times, during which he subconsciously spilled more details. For example, he remembered being shown telepathically by the aliens how to operate their vessel. But most notable among his story is that it never changed and always remained consistent throughout all the sessions. As a result, the case instantly attracted significant interest, not only from UFO enthusiasts, but also among the skeptics. The former believed Shermer's story to be genuine evidence of extraterrestrial contact. The others, meanwhile, dismissed them as nothing but pure fabrication, a result of a dream or hallucination. Over the years, Patrolman Shermer's story has been studied and adapted into documentaries and other literary works, one of which is a comic book. And the incident remains one of the most prominent UFO cases in the country. It continues to spark debate about the existence of extraterrestrial life and the credibility of such encounters. So there were five shocking extraterrestrial encounter stories. Please do subscribe. Check out some more of our content if you enjoyed watching. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you soon.